everyone. Um, we're just getting set up ready for our live Q&A with Charlotte from SR Nutrition. Um, I've invited her in, so hopefully she will see my request. Um, we're having a few little um, Facebook glitches this morning, but hopefully it will work. Wow, well, Facebook likes to take its time sometimes. <laughs> it's okay because we're starting a bit early. If you are there, if you could drop us a little emoji, um, just a little wave or something, it lets Facebook know that people are interested in um, this Q&A with Charlotte from SR Nutrition and pushes it out to everybody. Um, so that would be fantastic. Wow, it doesn't look like anybody's there at all. So, um, which I can't believe is true. I can actually see what's going on. The technology is fantastic until it's not working. <laughs> ah, there's Charlotte. Here we go. Hi. Hi, Charlotte. <laughs> Am I here? Can you see me? I can see you and I can hear you. Oh, amazing. Um, I've had to go back to my phone because it, yeah, it obviously wasn't working on my laptop. So here we are. Fantastic. Facebook is definitely being, um, I think it's got the Monday morning vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all this morning? Yes, definitely. So, um, yeah, so it's taken its time um, trying to load everything up, but at least we started a little bit earlier so that we could actually um, make yeah, sure that it was working exactly. before. We had a few back and forth, but anyway, here we are. <laughs> um, excuse my um, location. I'm in a car park somewhere oh, in Essex. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Just over. Um, I had to make sure I found somewhere with good Wi-Fi as well. Oh, yeah. So, um, that's cool. so that's all fine right okay oh well thank um, you for having me on and yeah sorry about all the all the back and forwards but yeah technology always drives me mad and at least we're here and i know that this isn't necessarily going out to everybody but hopefully people will be able to see it afterwards we can oh absolutely sure they know yeah it's gonna go um people will watch it if, in fact if you are watching it later just give us a hashtag replay so that everybody can see what's going on um but yeah i mean the technology is amazing but i do know that from previous experience that going live with Facebook can be a little bit temperamental but I think if yeah. you if you're prepped for it it's absolutely fine yeah. um but yes we're going to um this will be back in the group for people to watch back all week so that's absolutely fine and then we're going to 
repurpose it in some other ways probably going to load it onto the website so that people can um go back and refer to it so there'll be loads of ways for people to um to go back and have a look but yeah so if anybody is watching and has any questions for charlotte if you drop them into the comments below we can keep an eye on them and um see what's coming up and then charlotte can answer them but i've also got some that have come in already today and i'm just gonna load it up um perfect so, uh, yeah so there was quite a lot of um, questions on the group so i'm <laughs> sure we won't be short of having questions anyway i feel like you might struggle to get through all of these to be honest but that's fine we can do our best to get through as much yeah. as possible okay so first of all um we've got louise and she asked um at what age do you get concerned about a baby not really eating much savory food her baby's nine months old um and she celebrates if she has more than half an ice cube worth of savory which only happens maybe twice a week and she's finding it a bit overwhelming and disheartening okay so first of all i would say um the importance of this, so babies are born with a preference for sweeter foods. They enjoy and they prefer and they really readily accept sweet foods. And it's one of the reasons why when I talk about winning, I like to talk about starting with vegetables and really getting those savoury tastes in there because what we know is that although babies prefer sweeter tastes, they actually start to like what they are familiar with. So if we start weaning with sweet food and we carry on offering lots of sweet food we are just reinforcing that already existing preference for sweet foods and i'm not saying that we shouldn't ever give sweet foods and that apple purees and pears and things like that aren't okay because they absolutely are but i always try and look at it as like a bit of a ratio so you do want the ratio of savory to sweet to be higher especially at the start when you're building that familiarity um if your little one has got into the habit of preferring sweeter foods that's really 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 normal so try not to punish yourself it's you know almost we're, we're almost kind of fighting their natural desire to mm. want that sweet food because sweet food in nature is actually really new nutrient dense but actually in the society we live in now so much food has added sugar to it and there's lots and lots of other sweet foods available so we don't really want to emphasize that preference for sweeter food because of the environment that we live in so what i would say to that mom is that don't panic don't worry, keep going in there with savory options, just subtly up the amount that you offer. So even if your baby is kind of only taking little bits, that's brilliant, you know, even if they're having little bits. I'd also try not to, try and recommend not making every meal have to have something sweet, because again, kids like what's normal, babies like what's normal, what becomes the norm for them is what they are used to. And it can take a little bit of time to kind of break the habit of them expecting something sweet every meal or only accepting those sweet. But it's about that gradually building in those more savory flavors, even if at the start you're kind of mixing them in together and then upping that ratio so it's a bit more savory and a bit more savory and a bit more savory as you go along. Um, eating those kind of foods with them as well, letting them see you eating and enjoying lots of savory options. Nine months old, they're still nice and early in their weaning journey, so it's not like the preferences are set. Just keep trying, keep building up, you know, plenty of exploratory food, so things like broccoli finger foods on the side and you know maybe things like meat or fish which are much more neutral flavors that you can have either little sticks of or mashing and blending with other foods and just try gradually moving away from this idea of every meal time having to have something sweet mm -hmm. i hope that kind of helps that's brilliant that makes sense to me it's um and you're right it's the the world we live in now is not how our bodies were designed to be living uh, there's just way too much of the sugar everywhere i guess um okay so we've got someone else we've got Gemma, and she started her baby um a bit before six months and is really interested in baby led weaning um so she wants to move from the purees onto baby led weaning now babies at six months have you got any advice for that totally so yeah, absolutely. Baby led weaning is all about letting your baby kind of lead that journey, but also trying to offer plenty of finger food and pieces of food so that even if you're offering baby some stuff off of the spoon, you're actually allowing baby to explore and start biting, chewing, swallowing, self-feeding, all of that, which is all skill development. 
So first of all, if you're already offering purees, one thing I would say is try and move those puree textures up a notch because we want to be having baby on smooth purees just really early. So you can absolutely still offer baby food off of a spoon, but just try and build on those textures. I've actually got a blog on texture development. So try and move through gradually by blending less, cooking things a little bit less, adding a bit less liquid when you are blending them so that the texture just gradually gets a bit thicker and a bit thicker. At the and same I guess time, you can move on to like mashing rather than just exactly, just curing. exactly. So once you once you've started to do that, instead of you know you might want to cook things that still quite well, you might want to add liquid. But instead of having a blender and making it completely smooth, yeah, you gradually blend that less and less, and then eventually you can just literally take the back of a fork. Take for example something like um, a banana or um, something like some carrot, for example. If a carrot's really nicely cooked, you can easily mash it down with the back of a fork, mm -hmm. add a tiny splash of milk, and then you've got a bit more of a lumpy texture than that really, really smooth carrot puree. So yeah, the other thing to do is to try and offer nice, soft cooked finger foods. So one of the things actually I did when I was weaning my daughter was I made lots of things into balls. So when I was offering her like avocado, um, maybe I'd mix it with potato or a grain or something to make it into balls so that again, she can kind of pick things up and feed it to herself. It's ideal if finger foods are roughly the size and shape of an adult finger, just because in terms of their dexterity, it's easier for them to pick up long, thinner shapes. So things like really soft cooked carrot sticks, sticks of broccoli, soft ripe avocado. Um, these all make really great finger foods and things like sticks of Swedes, sticks of potato. Um, and once your baby's, you know, if your baby is kind of moving on from those tastes as well, things like soft cooked salmon, um, you know, really well cooked egg yolk. All of these things make great little finger foods that baby can start playing with themselves. All you want to do is rough, offer something that's roughly size and shape of an adult finger and something that you can squidge easily between your finger and thumb. If it collapses when your finger and thumb touch it, it means that the baby's tongue and their gums will be able to chomp that food down really easily and allow them to swallow it. But it's all skill development. So I would just say gradually move through that and start exploring more and more variety as you go. And no teeth required if it's soft enough either. No teeth required. So even, you know, like I say, if you can squidge it like that between your finger and thumb, it's likely baby's gums are hard. They're tough. It's likely that baby's <laughs> you gums... you ever put your gels. finger in baby's mouth, you know about it. Yeah, exactly. It does hurt. And and so, yeah, basically you want them to um, be able to just chop it. And even the tongue and the, on the roof of their mouth, as long as it collapses in your fingers like that, it's going to do that in their mouth. They don't need teeth. At this stage, they don't need to be chomping and biting food. Um, it's really about offering those soft pieces and gradually moving with baby as they get more and more used to used Brilliant. to that those textures. Cool. Okay, so we've got another Gemma and she's saying that her seven month old gets really upset when she tries to offer food. As soon as the food touches her lips she gets so upset and starts screaming. Um any tips to make it more enjoyable for her and to help her try to accept the food. Um they're trying one puree each day when she's in a happy mood but it very quickly goes downhill. Yes, so this is really normal. Don't worry about it. The main thing I would say is what we want is to try and take a few steps back. We, we want baby, rather than thinking we need to get her to eat this food, we need to get her to be happy to be in the high chair. So taking a step back, trying to have a routine throughout the day so that baby goes into the high chair at a certain time each day. The reason for that is because babies like routine. If it's quite sporadic and we're doing it sometimes in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the middle of the day, sometimes when we're out and about, sometimes when we're in the kitchen, it's quite overwhelming for them because they're going, what? what, why is food coming now? Whereas actually if we can establish a nice routine around when they go in that high chair, it can make a big difference. The other thing I would say is sit with your baby at those times and you eat. So rather than it being this time that, right, we're all going to sit down, we're going to be looking at you, we're going to be feeding you. Instead, step back, sit down, bring that routine in, lots of smiles, feed yourself. Yeah. Because your baby, they love it. They're going to be fascinated. They're going to watch you eating. They're going to be exploring. They learn so much more from watching you eat than they will from you just putting the spoon to their mouth. And the third thing I would say in that scenario is, Maybe your baby isn't liking the idea of 
feeding them, you know, being fed. So perhaps what you could do, some babies love self-feeding right from the start. So maybe you could lo load the spoon and pop it next to her with the bowl and let her explore. Even if that means making a little bit of mess to begin with, that's building familiarization with food. That's allowing your baby to play and explore and they'll enjoy that much more. And the other thing you could do is also offer soft cooked finger food. So Give your baby something like a chunk of potato, you know, nice, really well cooked potato that squidges between your finger and thumb. Take the skin off, pop it next to her alongside whatever puree you're offering her. Load the spoon and let her explore it while you feed yourself. It will make a massive change. And it's about getting baby to enjoy that meal time rather than them actually eat it. So, yeah. yeah brilliant. Okay. Um, what else have we got? Uh... Is it okay to use cow's milk in cooking? Um, is it okay to use it in porridge um, for seven, seven and a half month old? So cow's milk is an allergen. Now, that's absolutely fine. Allergens should be introduced during weaning. Um, and they should be introduced in small amounts early on in the weaning journey and then leave a two or three day gap before you offer another allergen. Cow's milk is a bit of a complicated one though because if your baby has had formula milk in their life and tolerated it and been absolutely fine on it, then they are really likely to be absolutely fine on cow's mm -hmm. milk because formula milk is based on cow's milk. So if your baby has been having or had formula milk and tolerated it, I wouldn't worry too much. Yes, absolutely go in there and give cow's milk in their porridge in their you know in their purees whatever you want to offer it that's fine and they only need small amounts of dairy because they're getting most of their milk from either their formula or breast milk if your little one has not had any formula and hasn't had any cow's milk then again it's still fine to offer it but you would go in with a small amount of cow's milk um, and just try that for the first time and follow kind of allergy guidelines so small amount leave a couple of days gap before you add a new food um I'm sorry before you add another allergen and yeah. make sure that that cow's milk is the only new food you're giving that day um, but yeah. otherwise yes that should be absolutely fine <laughs> Um, so we've got Amber and she said she's on day 15 of how to wean your baby. Um, she says she's loving the book and her little one is taking to it really well. So she's feel, feeling really confident. Um, her little one's almost five months and she's been offering an open cup of cooked boiled water, boiled cold water with meals. And he does take a few sips, um, but she's noticed he's more dehydrated since weaning and takes a little less milk. What can she do to keep him hydrated? Um, he's almost five months. Okay, so um, almost five months. Um, so what I would normally say during this time is that we, we do want to make sure, go, go in there really slowly with the weaning, because obviously babies, you know, up until about six months, majority of what they would be eating, and even, for, you know, following on from that would be milk. So we want to make sure that the meals are not replacing baby's milk. Um, specifically, especially at this stage, it's really important baby is getting plenty of milk. So I'd keep those meals to a really small amount and I would try not to move through the meals too quickly because, you know, baby doesn't need lots of food just yet, especially if baby isn't for, for quite five months yet. Make yeah. sure baby's showing nice readiness for weaning. Um, but yeah, take that nice and slowly. Plenty of milk for baby. Um, they don't really need much in the way of water. I would say that water is really about from six months old. It's more about them learning to sip water and to take water so really that yeah. focus within the liquid should be on the milk if you're yeah. finding your baby isn't taking much milk yeah we're definitely just kind of slow down a little bit with the weaning go really slowly really small amount and focus on baby having plenty of milk you can still have a routine if you have got a routine but just try and stick to that one meal a day so that baby isn't yeah. eating those um if you are worried as well add baby's normal milk to any puree so baby's getting plenty of milk in those in the foods that they are having as well early on yeah. Definitely is have a chat with your health visitor because you know if you started weaning a little bit before um six months it's always worthwhile checking with yeah. with, with health how you're getting on definitely and i always say as well it's hard um for us as adults to imagine how milk would sustain a baby and keep them full up basically when they're little but actually when you compare what's in a tablespoon of breast milk or formula milk compared to a tablespoon of 
um, carrot puree, for example, yeah. they're going to get so much more from the milk than they are from solids. And sometimes I think as adults, we, we forget how nutrient dense formula yeah. and breast milk actually is at this age. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, important to remember exactly. that. yeah absolutely. <laughs> um, so as she said, uh, well, this is Katie. And she said, would you recommend using olive oil or extra virgin olive oil for babies? Um, so if you're adding a little bit of oil to baby's foods, that's fine. You don't have to add it all the time. You know, you can, you can vary the kind of things that you're adding to add some fats and flavor. So like we've already said, baby's, baby's current milk, um, once baby's six months, baby's formula, some express breast milk or full fat cow's milk is fine to add to their meals as long as they can take the cow's milk. Um, you can add things like a little bit of unsalted butter. You can add olive oil, extra virgin. Uh, obviously it is more expensive. Um, it is a bit easier sometimes to use. It has a slightly different flavour. So I would just say vary what you offer and don't get too bogged down in, you know, specific, you know, oil or something that baby has to have. It's all about that variety. And there's plenty of fats that will come from their food. So things like avocado, oily fish, um, unsalted butter, dairy foods, cheese, um, and things like oil can all be added. You don't need to add loads. There's plenty of fat in the food they're eating. Also, if they're having things like nut butters and as they get more in their weaning gym, things like milled seeds, they can all help to add fats to baby's food too. Perfect. Um, Kate, no, oh, it's the same, Katie. Um, I am offering iron-rich foods, but is that enough or should I be offering an iron supplement because it's recommended in the US but not in Europe? Yeah, so in the US they have much higher recommendations for iron than we do in the UK, and we still have high iron recommendations in the UK too. Um, so it's just really a difference of the interpretation of the research. Yeah. Um, it is important to make sure we're getting iron-rich foods in there, especially as babies' levels start to drop. But actually, there's no indication that our, you know, our levels are, are lower than um, or not enough compared to what the Americans recommend. But definitely what I would say is once babies on three meals a day, we really want to be offering two or three portions of iron rich foods. So things like lentils, beans, pulses meats fish eggs especially egg yolks a really good source things like nut butters some dark green leafy veggies um these are all great that every day two to three portions two of iron rich foods every day iron rich foods every day once baby is established on weaning yeah. having about three meals a day okay. if you've got my weaning book i do talk about iron and i do add lots of iron rich foods in i've also got a blog i've just recently written actually which is on i've forgotten what the actual title is basically iron rich meals for babies and toddlers so that includes plenty Plenty of ways that you can add iron in, even things Perfect. like fortified cereals. So things like ready bread and fortified cereals can be a really good source of iron too. But yeah, try not to worry too much um, about the different recommendations because in the UK we have our recommendations, and ultimately is two to three portions of those iron-rich foods a day. Once your baby's established on weaning, that's what you need to try and think about. And these are small portions as well, but there are some foods. So things like red meat and, and beef and lentils. So green, green brown lentils. They're such a great nutrient-rich food for babies. They don't eat huge amounts, but they're a really good source of iron as well. Perfect. Um, so Emma has asked, how do you know when to introduce... Oh, no, let's start with Paula first. How do I know when to stop feeding? Baby keeps pulling the spoon, spoon to their mouth and then howling for more. At six months, I thought the recommendations was half an ice cube portion. Um, so, she, yeah, she wants to know um, when's enough. <laughs> So there are no portion size guidelines for babies. And the reason for this is because babies all take to weaning so differently. You can honestly have one baby who just absolutely loves it and really takes to it from six months and is really enjoying that food. You can then have the other end of the spectrum where a baby just is like, what on earth is this stuff you're giving me? I want my milk, I'm not interested. Both are very, very normal scenarios. Um, it's best to try and follow baby's lead a little bit, obviously encouraging them to eat food if they're feeding to appetite so if they're saying they want more allow them to have more um, mm -hmm. the other thing you could do is maybe start with smaller portions and allow them to come in for seconds you can also offer a variety of textures so if baby's really quickly eating that food you've got maybe some finger foods which can slow down the pace of that meal a little bit give them a little bit more time to eat it so the thing is we do we do want to follow their appetite we do want to allow them to have seconds and come back for more and kind of eat to appetite as much as we can but there are ways we can kind of slow yeah. that pace so baby just guzzling it all we don't want it to massively impact their milk intake especially early on in weaning because milk is still important so what the only thing we don't want to do is if baby is eating and eating 
fasting and really, really reducing their milk feeds early on in weaning, that's not ideal. Yeah. So as a parent, we can go, do you know what? You've eaten quite a lot now and I kind of feel like they're, you know, you don't really need more or maybe we need to slow that or maybe you're getting full and you're not really understanding that feeling because they're still learning so much. They might like the taste of something and still not be able to go, okay, I've had enough now. Um, mm. And really about trying to encourage them to listen to their appetite. So, you know, even early on, rubbing your tummy and saying, are you full? What's your tummy saying? Even before they can really understand it, they will start to pick up on that quite quickly. And even role modeling that yourself, like mummy's finished now, I'm going to push the plate away because I don't want any more. Oh, my tummy feels really full, you know. It makes a huge difference. So trying to allow them to work out how to start listening to their signs of fullness and their tummy. Feed to appetite as much as you can. But if you feel, do you know what? You've had two bowls of this. It's massive. You're, you're tiny. I feel like that is probably over and it might impact your milk. We're finished now. We haven't got any more. Sorry. Um, and then, but like I said, do lots of things like offering them extras if they want it, offering them finger foods at the same time, role modeling, all of that. Um, and just like I say, keep making sure they've got, you know, plenty of appetite for their milk still. So leave a nice gap of time before you then offer their milk again. Um, it's a difficult one. I have got vlogs on this and sometimes babies just go through phases where they start winning and they just love it so much. And it's the novelty of <laughs> They're like, yes, 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 give me more. I'm loving this. And it's time really as well, isn't it? Yeah, and we want to encourage that as well. So we don't want to, you know, rein that in too much. So let them explore, let them enjoy. But obviously there might come a time where you think, okay, I, I think there is too much. Or maybe you've run out of food and that's okay too. Um, you yeah. know, they've got it's using your parenting instincts, isn't yeah. it? Because we know much more than we give ourselves credit for, right? Completely, yeah. yeah, completely. <laughs> But I have got a vlog on it. So if you look at my vlog on baby portion sizes, at the bottom, I also talk about babies who are going in for more. And one of the things that really helped with my son, he used to eat porridge like that and so much of it. <laughs> so I mind. always went in with a smaller portion first. And then I would say, you know, once he's finished that and had a few bits of finger foods, if he asks for more, okay, it slows the pace of the meal and it allows them to have an empty bowl, which visually can make them say, okay, what's my tummy feeling? Now? So yeah. It really helped. It's really interesting. Um, so Emma has asked, how do you know when to introduce the next meal? Um, she's currently on breakfast and lunch, which her six and a half month old is loving and clearing bowls. But when do you know to move to another meal um, and also increase textures? So with moving to a meal it's really it is a bit more intuitive as well it's about you know if your baby's loving food if they're eating plenty and as long as their milk intakes aren't dropping hugely because just as an example if a baby is formula fed the recommendation is to offer around um around 600 meals of milk at seven months of age and then once baby gets to 10 months of age it's more like 400 meals so it's a real gradual decline from 600 to 400 between seven months and 10 months of age so it's a real gradual decline if your baby's milk intakes are dropping much further than that i would you know be i would you know keep an eye on that and just make sure they're not kind of refusing milk and having only food in place of it but if their milk intakes are still good if they're still having around 600 meals of milk they're having two meals they're loving those meals and they're eating plenty and they're building that skill and they're really enjoying those meal times absolutely can move to another meal so i normally say that you know babies can move from one to two to three meals it might happen over two or three weeks for some baby yeah and it actually did with both of mine it was about two three weeks possibly you know getting closer to a month and they were on three meals some babies that might not be for a couple of months it might take a little bit longer and it might take a little bit more practice and experimenting with food so follow their lead if they're loving it and they're not massively dropping that milk feed then you know absolutely fine for them to be kind of carrying on and, and moving on to three meals by seven months but just follow your intuition like we said already see how they're getting on and and yeah try and be part of those meal times with them as well it makes a big difference perfect um so we've got a comment on this feed actually from jade and she says can we wean from four months apparently it helps with reflux so that's a really really good question First of all, there actually isn't any evidence that it does help with reflux. And I actually had a reflux baby and I did some work with a dietitian who actually supported with um, a blog. I have a blog on my website, which is called um, Weaning a Reflux Baby. It's written by Lottie Dietitian. And it's a really good, um, really good blog to help you if you have got a reflux baby, because there actually isn't any evidence that babies need to be weaned earlier and um, if they have reflux. 
there might be certain situations, certain conditions where a paediatrician will say, I think I would recommend your baby has um, starts weaning early. And I think that's fine because there are going to be, all babies are so different. But the most important thing I would say is we still, even if, baby should be weaning early we still be wanting to recognize these signs of readiness and these are that baby can sit up they can hold their head and neck steady they don't need to sit up completely unsupported but with a little bit of support in the high chair as long as they can hold their head and neck and they can hold their trunk nice and steady that allows them to be able to focus on their hand eye coordination and to be able to swallow more readily if they're kind of flopping down flopping forward flopping backwards it's not putting this in a position to be able to swallow solid foods more effectively so they need to be sitting with their head and neck steady they need to be able to coordinate their hands eyes and mouth so they should be able to see food pick it up and bring it to their mouth by themselves okay if they can do this kind of action brilliant the third thing is that they should have less of a tongue thrust reflex so if you put your finger on baby's tongue between about four and six months they'll do this reflex reflex action which will just be to instantly point that out as they move towards six months they start starts to lessen and what you'll find is maybe it's a bit slower and it's a bit less of a reflex reaction so they'll go hmm, what's that rather than yeah. you know straight away and as that moves it just means that baby's tongue will be actually able to move food back into the mouth rather than pushing it all out so we want to kind of look for that happening and sometimes that might just be starting weaning and seeing if your baby is just constantly tongue comes straight back out, pushes that food out. They're probably not quite ready yet. And we want to see those three signs happening at the same time. And it normally happens at around six months. Yeah. But obviously all babies are different. So some will be a little bit earlier. Some might be a little bit later, but look out for those signs of readiness. Um, and yeah, try not to think that you need to kind of wean early to solve something. Um, if you're seeing those signs of readiness and someone is recommended, you know, maybe it might be beneficial you starting a little bit earlier then absolutely fine um but other than that there isn't a lot of evidence for some of these conditions so check out my blog on weaning a reflux baby it should help cool um somebody has asked what is the best baby rice or cereal to start weaning your baby with okay so i I'm, I'm not a biggest advocate of baby rice or cereal. The reason being because it's really good when you start weaning to let baby explore lots of flavours. And in recent years, that's what we found is that babies actually need to try lots of different tastes to really help their taste buds to start experiencing something very new. And as I've already said on this slide, familiarity is what leads to acceptance. So the more that we can familiarize baby with different tastes and flavors and savory options and umami options and more neutral flavors, the more likely they are to accept wider variety of tastes later on. So the problem with starting with baby wise is you get this big box, which actually is fortified, which is a really good thing. Um, sometimes they're flavored with very sweet flavors, which we do not want. Um, Sometimes they're plain or neutral, which is fine. But the trouble is they have one texture and one flavor. They are not allowing your baby to try different flavors and tones and textures and tastes. And that really is what weaning is about. And what we know now is kind of people who do lots of research and, and obviously for someone who works this for, we know that giving them that variety is really nice and early on. So some people might start uh, with baby rice and they might offer baby rice for two weeks straight, sometimes even a month straight. And that means that that baby has had one flavor. Sometimes it's quite sweet. And, and so it's it's not really ideal. So if you are going to offer baby rice, fine. But I would personally say try and mix it with some other flavors. So so maybe some pureed broccoli, some pureed courgettes, some mashed up potato um, to really help your baby to start getting a bit of texture and exploration in that as well. So you don't need to throw your box away, but just mix it with other things. Um, and again, I I've got a juicing as wallpaper paste because that's what it looks like. It, it <laughs> does look like wallpaper or glue. Yeah, absolutely. But like I say, it's fortified. So I'm not saying it's terrible. But if you are going to choose baby wise, go with fortified ones. Go with um, ones that aren't sweetened. OK, really yeah. important. Not sweet, not with fruit or not with sugar or anything else. And try and mix your own flavor textures in with it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Um, well, we're at 11 o'clock already, so we've done half an hour. We've squeezed in loads. Thank you so much, Charlotte. No worries at all. And yeah, let me know if you want me to come back and do um, anything else. That, you know, I'm really going to be supporting Weaning Week all week. And I've got lots of posts myself coming out as well. So really excited to be part of Lovely. it. Lovely. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll catch up with everybody at 1.30 because we've got Siobhan from Mummy Cooks. She's going to be joining us talking about um, weaning on holiday, which um, is always a good subject um, because people are frightened of it. But actually, I think it's the best time to do weaning. Yeah. Um,
Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you um, so much. I'm sure you'll be around in the group anyway, so um, we might see uh, we might see some of the questions answered okay. by you, perhaps. Yeah. No worries, um, at all. I'll be there. Lovely. Okay, bye. Right, we'll speak soon. Bye.